All right, we cut a possum in the trap, and there's a it's a pregnant possum, and she's got some babies. Let's see if we have to switch traps. Ideally, you want. To... Yeah, I can see the baby. Yeah, it's probably you know minimum three up to like I said thirteen. focused here. This guy right here, he's probably... Oh, let's see that one. He's probably four months, three months. Little little male. Oh, this is this is about the size they get when they go out on their own. That's when they start getting into trouble. Wow. So they're about that big. One, two, three. Wow. Yes, yeah, so now this one smells like a possum, so I want to use this one. There's a little baby possum. Let's get her mouth wide open. Let's see if I can take it down. Mm -hmm. yeah, look at the baby. It's definitely a baby. She, I mean, if you, if you look inside the egg, I mean, she probably got four or five inside there. And they're really, I mean, look how docile she is. I mean, she, yeah, she's not like. I mean, she won't. They don't really bite. They, you know, she'll let me, let me scratch her on her chin. They're really, really docile animals. Come here, baby, she's got her. Okay. Put her away. Wow. So, what are the chances that there's still skunks coming back? Well, we have to give it a couple more days because they do wander. They, they, you know, they do go from den to den. So, I'll probably give this job till Tuesday. If we don't get any digging or we don't catch any skunks by Tuesday, we know they're gone. Either mom got hit by a car or you know got attacked by a dog or she just. A lot of times they'll just leave. Okay. They have, they have so many different den sites that you know they just move around so much. So if she comes here and the dirt's filled in and. It smells like possums, and there's a trap out here. A lot of times, we disturb their their environment so much they just go to the bottom. They just go to a different site, which I'm happy with. Yeah. Oh yeah. It, it, that's got to be the worst animal to try to. Yeah. I mean, I have. I actually have a baby in the back of my truck right now. They had to put the. Well, we we put them down on the spot. Oh, yeah. you do, right? Yeah. It's it's state law. Um, skunks are the main contributor of rabies in Illinois. The striped skunks. So it's just the way they control the rabies, and it's. There's too many of them, and it's just the way the state controls the population. They make us do it. They make us look like the bad guys instead of having them do it. Uh, and it comes down to we're the one that's in contact with them the most, so it does make sense to have us do it, I guess. Yeah. But uh, that, that, that's the mark of a professional right there. If you can, you know, get close enough and give a skunk a shot without getting sprayed. And how, how often does that happen that you don't get sprayed? I'm 14 for 14 right Are now. Are you? Wow. You got sprayed once. There's just little tricks and you know little techniques you do. They're, they have really bad eyesight skunks. I mean, as long as they don't see you, you can basically do anything you want. So what I do is I take a big piece of car. Say I were to catch a skunk here, I take a big piece of cardboard and I basically make a shield out of it. And I stand here and I'll step, and it's a real slow process. Step, because all he sees, he doesn't really have good depth perception. All he sees is this big flat object moving at him. Ah. So what I'll do, and then what we have to do is we take the trap. We stand it up on end because they're, they're horrible climbers and he'll just hunker down at the bottom and then I just take my syringe pole and I open up the top of the trap and I give him a shot. Oh. A lot of times, I mean, if you're good at what you do and you do it right, they're, you know, they're, they're gone before you even pull your needle out. So this possum here, what do you think you'll end up doing with that one? It'll get euthanized. It I'm will? I'm not going to lie to you, yeah. Yeah. Because what it comes down to is, you know, there's, they consider it a nuisance animal. There's just so many of them. No one traps them for fur anymore, nothing like that. And you know, it is a shame. I wish we, I wish there were more rehabilitators out there. But yeah. like I said, no one wants you know the plain old possum. They all want eagles and all the other nice exotic animals. So what do you have to do? Euthanize each of the babies too? Then no, it's um since we're all I, you know I'm licensed by Department of Natural Resources. We uh, we share an office with a place called Prizer Animal Hospital. So we have the facilities over there, and we just they go right into a gas chamber. Oh.
it's basically just like a human's umbilical cord because they're born so early. Yeah. I mean, there's always, you know, I think they always have, I, at least this is what I've heard, they always have more than how many nipples they have. So there's always two or three that don't actually make it, from, you know, to the pouch. You know, there's a, they have to crawl across the stomach and there's always a couple that don't make it or get pushed out of the pouch or a mom loses them. Yeah. had a horrible argument with the lady this morning. She must have been a PETA lady. Why? What do you mean? And she's well. I mean, as you know, as you can see, we don't. We, our company. We're one of the only companies. We don't wear uniforms. We don't mark our trucks. So there's a lot of people out there that just don't understand. You know that the nuisance aspect of the animal. Everything should be saved to them. And I try to. I, in my main argument, when I tell people, that's what I told this lady. I said, "Listen, lady. I said, if you were educated and you knew better, you should know that when a human puts down an animal, it's the most humane thing that can be done because." Us as humans, we have the technology and the smarts to do things in a humane way. If that possum were to die in the wild on its own, it would either die a horrible death from disease, yeah. or it would just die from you know being attacked by another animal, which is another horrible death. So us as humans, if the animal does have to be put down, it's going to be the most humane way possible for the animal, just because we're humans. Right. And people just can't grasp that, though. So this was a lady that you weren't setting traps oh, for? Oh, yeah, this was just a lady driving by who saw me you know, loading stuff in my truck. It happens a couple times a week. Oh, my gosh. And, I, and these are, you know, this lady has no I, no idea that I have a degree in wildlife biology from the University of Illinois, and you know, they just think we're some redneck backwoods people. Jeez. And that, people always ask us, you know, why don't you mark your trucks? It's great advertisement. You know, we've had trucks burnt before when we had markings on them. Oh, jeez, I never would have thought of that. Yeah, it's, it's a big problem in our in our industry. And what it is is in the in the winter time when this. When this all slows down, we all fur trap for our money. That's how we make our money. Oh, really? You know, it's it's an excellent way to make it, make an income in the winter time. We go up to you know the UP and we go up to Michigan. Even around here, what I do is if I get like I have a couple clients in Barrington that have big horse farms, I'll get in good with them and I say you know in the winter time, do you mind if I come back here for free? And you know we'll clear out the critters for you, no problem. You know we we'll make a couple thousand dollars in the winter time doing that. But the problem now is PETA got laws passed where. We can't ship our <coughs> ship our furs to Europe anymore, so the market has just been killed. Oh. So therefore, oh, come on in. Uh, oh, you can go in the go in the garage. I'll get Andrea. All the old, you know, all the old guys who used to, you know, who are trappers. They, that's all they did is fur trap. They gave up, you know, they gave up the business. So no one fur traps anymore, and there's just a huge, huge market of animals, and it creates millions and millions of more animals because no one's taking care of them. Yeah.